So we have Dr. Pratap Mohan who will be talking about management of flaps triad. Thank you, uh, Dr. Namrata, for giving me this opportunity. Um, it's really a wonderful session we have had so far, and uh, I'm I'm very happy to be part of this iconic list of uh, speakers. Um, I don't know how to get out of this. One minute. Yeah. Can you see my screen now? No. No. They can't. Okay. One minute. Let's share screen first. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So this is actually a, a video which is running for seven point five minutes. So we'll be done uh, in no time. So. The authors have no financial interest in any of the products mentioned in this video. are defined as small wrinkles or fold in the cornea as a result of LASIK surgery. The most common classification of flap striae divides them broadly based on their size. Micro striae are microscopic superficial wrinkles that are generally asymptomatic and often only detectable on microscopic examination of the cornea. However, macro striae are larger and full thickness folds that usually cause noticeable visual impairment. The incidence of clinically significant striae requiring treatment is between 0.2 to 1.5%. The common causes of striae are thinner flaps, higher ablation depth, misalignment of flap after replacement, flap contraction and desiccation during ablation, flap wrinkling during stretching, movement of the flap on the first post-op day, tenting of corneal flap over an ablated stromal bed, a nasal versus a superior hinge, an excessive manipulation of the flap. Micro or macro striae not causing visual symptoms can be left alone. Flap folds such as this can cause severe visual symptoms and have to be dealt with immediately. Visual symptoms linked to striae include irregular astigmatism, optical abrasions, monocular diplopia, and degraded uncorrected visual acuity and best corrected visual acuity. Early intervention is recommended in these cases. In the first case, the pupil is dilated for a good transillumination effect on the striae. The flat margins are identified. The Sinsky hook is used to break the epithelium. The flap is lifted and floated on the bed. Two dry mirosis sponges are used to stretch the striae perpendicular to its direction. The stretching is done repeatedly till the visual axis is clear. Flap is replaced meticulously and a bandage contact lens is applied. The post-operative photo shows a clearing of the macro striae with significant visual improvement. The second case presented on the third post-op day with flap slippage and flap folds. Here, the stromal bed is exposed with epithelial ingrowth. In this situation, the epithelium over the exposed bed is meticulously removed with a hockey stick knife before lifting the flap. The flap is lifted. The folds in the flap can be best addressed only by removal of epithelium on the surface. So the epithelium is completely removed on the flap surface as well. The flap folds are stretched using two dry merosal sponges. The bed is washed to remove epithelial nests. Flap is replaced and smoothened with a wet sponge. Four 11-0 nylon sutures and one 10 nylon suture was applied to keep the flap in position. Then a bandage contact lens is placed. This case highlights the importance of preventing epithelial ingrowth in such situations. 
The post-operative picture shows a smooth flap with a good return of visual acuity. The third case shows a similar situation with a flat slippage with dense flap folds and epithelial ingrowth. A medusal sponge is used to completely remove all epithelium on the exposed stromal surface and a 2 mm margin around the flap. Flap is floated into position. The epithelium on the surface is also removed to facilitate the removal of striae. Stretching the striae is done using two dry medusal sponges perpendicular to the direction of the striae. Flap is replaced after completely washing the interface. Fourth case shows a completely displaced flap with rolled edges. This video shows the importance of removing epithelium under the surface of the flap in addition to the stromal bed. The rolled up flap edges are gently scraped off the epithelial ingrowth and replaced. Suturing the flap is mandatory in this situation to prevent repeat flap slippage and epithelial ingrowth. Femto flaps show less incidence of flap displacement and striae due to better fitting of the flap on the bed. However, this femto flap shows radiating flap striae originating from the hinge. The epithelium of the striae is removed after lifting the flap. The striae are stretched perpendicularly. The flap is replaced on the bed after thorough washing of the interface. The pre-placed marks show a significant shift after realignment of the flap. In cases with visually significant striae, early intervention, meticulous removal of epithelium from stroma, application of suture and bandage contact lens gives best results. Our series of patients improved with simple stretching of the striae using dry medusal sponges. In case of refractory striae, PTK and Donnan Field method of hypothermic ironing of the flap using heated spatulas has also been recommended. Flap striae are better prevented than managed. Examination of the flap at 20 minutes post-operatively is recommended to ensure the flap has not slipped out of position. Careful and precise positioning in trop is mandatory. Good counseling and need for adequate protection during day and night prevents and lowers the incidence of flap striae. Thank you, Sujata. I think uh, that was again uh, excellent presentation. Various ways of managing flap strea.